The world of art is something I never really thought about. I have been learning that you do not need to be an artist to have your life enriched, or in some cases, totally transformed by the world of art. Art can be many things, a lens to view other disciplines, such as literature, history, anthropology, and even psychology. Art is a mirror of truth, reflecting our own culture back to us, a direct transmission, a language of spirit. Art is always contemporary. 35,000-year-old paintings may have had a different meaning to the people who created them. Did our ancestors, the people who first reached for something more, have transcendence in mind? In the 21st century, looking back, what do we see in the art of our ancestors? Today, let's look at two pieces of art from two different time periods. First will be Caravaggio's Conversion of St. Paul. The second piece of art will be The Scream by Edward Monk. The Conversion of St. Paul was painted in 1601 by the Italian artist known as Caravaggio. The Conversion of St. Paul is oil on canvas and is 7 feet 6 inches by 5 feet 8 inches. This painting was done post-Renaissance, a time and style known as Baroque. Here's an example of a Renaissance painting. This is Madonna of the Goldfinch, painted by Raphael in 1506. This is a great example of a Renaissance painting. Notice the bright colors and the expansive landscape in the background. Now compare Raphael's Renaissance painting to Caravaggio's Baroque painting. There is no landscape, instead the whole painting is taken up by the characters. There is an expression of naturalism and action. You can see the dirt on the horse's hooves. A single source of light is allowing us to see the events unfold, as though the light is telling us a story, the light as a narrator. The Baroque style of painting literally turned the Renaissance upside down. Take for example of how Caravaggio flips the composition in the conversion of St. Paul. This action scene is a biblical story about a Roman citizen named Saul. Saul caused havoc for the new followers of Jesus by hunting them down for imprisonment. Saul was on the road to Damascus, terrorizing Christians, when God appeared to him. Like the clap of thunder, Saul heard God say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? The voice in the bright light of this Christian God so stunned Saul that he fell hopelessly from his horse. This strong man, this persecutor of Christians, lay hopeless. His helmet and sword, tools and possessions that he always relied on, are now useless. This encounter with the King of Kings blinded Saul for three days. This theme of being blinded or in darkness for three days is a common theme in biblical stories. Jonah being swallowed alive was in darkness in the belly of the whale for three days. Jesus, after the crucifixion, experienced three days of darkness before the resurrection. The screen was painted by Edvard Munch in 1893. The screen is oil tempera and pastel painted on cardboard. It is 28.9 inches by 36 inches. This painting was done in the period called symbolism, a precursor to expressionism. Symbolism and Expressionism was requiring the viewer to participate, to look deeper into the art and to themselves. Sacrificing naturalism for emotion, these brushstrokes had shifted towards the subjective experience. Edward Monk was deeply influenced by the art around him, including Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. 
The two human figures in the background, and the boats further out, give a perspective of space to the character in the foreground. What is the artist trying to say? What is the scream? Is it a commentary on our place in nature during the industrial age? A disconnection, perhaps? Or was it inspired from nature herself, the deadliest volcano eruption in modern history, killing over 40,000 people in what is now known as Indonesia in 1883? The gases releasing deep from within our Earth changed our atmosphere for months around the globe. Could it have been this force of nature that inspired the scream? A writing in Edward Monk's diary, January 22, 1892. I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun went down. I felt a gust of melancholy. Suddenly the sky turned a bloody red. I stopped, leaned against the railing, tired to death, as the flaming skies hung like blood and sword over the city. My friends went on. I stood there trembling with anxiety, and I felt a vast, infinite scream through nature. Perhaps the scream was no more than a looking glass into the heart of Edward Monk. Here is a self-portrait titled, Self-Portrait in Hell. Caravaggio and Edward Monk were both troubled men. Caravaggio experienced tragedy early in his life, losing both parents to the plague. He was also a notorious brawler, who was arrested over 11 times for assaulting people. Eventually he had to flee Rome after killing a man. He died in exile. Edward Monk was also dealt a heavy blow early in his life, when both his sister and mother died from tuberculosis. Perhaps we can get better insight by hearing the man's own words. Illness, insanity, and death were the black angels that kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me all my life. With these similarities, Caravaggio and Edward Monk also seemed worlds apart. Caravaggio, an Italian Baroque painter from the 16th and early 17th century, and Edward Monk, a Norwegian artist from the 19th and early 20th century, using symbolism to explore the deep recesses of human psychology. Yet I believe there are similarities in both paintings. Notice in both paintings, there are two other characters in the background. In the conversion of St. Paul, we see both the horse and the groom. In the scream, we see two figures walking in the distance. It's as though the groom and the horse are oblivious to Saul's encounter. I believe the same could be said for the two characters in the scream, unaware of the main character's existential torment. All art is contemporary. In the 21st century, what do we see in these paintings? With all we know, or think we know, with all our bias, both implicit and explicit, what do they point to? Perhaps both of these paintings point towards an aspect of the human condition. At some point in our lives, no matter how well it's going, we will be flung from our horse. The people in our lives may not understand or even notice. Some of the ones closest to us will choose to look away or worse, walk away. We may suffer in darkness for three days, like Saul or Jonah in the belly of the whale or have an eternal scream that matches all the horrors of nature. There is a part of the biblical story of the conversion of St. Paul I have not shared yet. After Saul was blinded by God, he recovered his sight after three days. He was now gifted with new vision, a transformation. With Saul's new insights, history would remember him as St. Paul. These paintings remind me of what mythologist Joseph Campbell once said. It is by going down into the abyss that we recover the treasures of life. The very cave you are afraid to enter turns out to be the source of what you are looking for. Where you stumble, there lies your treasure.